Headphones are one of my favorite things. I don't think you can ever really have enough of them, and they all do different jobs anyway. Join the crew on Patreon. There's an awesome new sticker that only crew members can get. Details are linked below. Leave a like and share this video if you can. One of the more popular videos on the channel from a few years ago is the Sony 7506 rebuild, and I still use those very regularly. My main go-to set these days are the Audio-Technica ATH-M50X with the removable cable though. But before those were around, I went through two pairs of the ATH-M50s from the time they came out until the X model was introduced, and I still have my last pair here. When I say I went through them, I don't mean they've stopped working. They still sound as good as ever. Hundreds of hours of live events and broadcasts went through these headphones on gigs over the years, but only one thing has really ever failed, and that's the stupid, ugly, fake leather. So I want to get these back in action, and I've got some ideas for how I want them to look. One thing that I really love about the M50X model is the removable cable, so we'll be upgrading to one of those for sure. But let's get started taking them apart. The easiest part of this will be the ear pads because you can just jump online and search for almost any model headphone these days and the words replacement ear pads, and you'll find tons of options to choose from. I'm gonna try these gray memory foam pads, but if these don't work out, I might go for something closer to the Bayer Dynamic pads, out of that kind of velour material, because I like that a lot too. The real tricky part is always going to be the headband. The fake leather really suffers quickly here and leaves little specks of the stuff all over you as it falls apart. It's often a lot harder than this model is to remove too, but here we have a few screws holding in the retaining ends and I just split the stitching along the seam to unwrap it with the least amount of damage. All of this foam will need to be replaced too and we'll clean up all of the tape residue in the layers. You can see how simply the headband is formed out of layers of metal, plastic, and foam sandwiched together, so it should be pretty easy to reshape and rewrap that with a little care. The last step in the cleaning process was to use some Goo Gone on any parts with tape residue. He let it sit for a minute and then the residue scrapes right off. All of the parts were then cleaned and wiped down with a little rubbing alcohol so the new double sided tape I'll be using will stick better. It was easiest to take both of the drivers off to clean which makes a good time to remove the old cable and replace it with a 3.5mm jack. There are so many of these available now online, I was able to just take some measurements and order one that fit right in without much work at all. You do however need to remove one of the strain relief standoffs from the old cable to allow enough depth for any of the options I found to fit in. I used a side cutter to just snip it right off. Do it like a band-aid, one motion, right off! Wiring things up is really simple, especially if you took photos of everything before you unwired it earlier. I used just enough wire to allow it to open again easily, but it's a tight fit inside, so keep things as tidy as you can and that'll make it easier. Now, in order to get it all closed again, the bracket that holds the element down needs to be notched to fit. I used an X-Acto knife to score the plastic pretty deep and then pulled it away slowly in chunks. I would suggest doing this in place rather than removing it as the mount that it is in gives some support so you're less likely maybe to snap it while you cut things out. Go carefully and you shouldn't have any issues. With things buttoned back up, I did a quick test to check everything was working and it's time to start rebuilding. The headband originally had pretty soft foam and I want to change that to be really firm. I'm using sticky backed craft foam here to build up layers and then shape it down with the X-Acto knife again. This was actually super easy and you could do a lot more with this technique if you wanted to make something really unique or unusual. I really wanted to use a heavy fabric that wouldn't wear out so fast on this project. That was like a really big goal. 
After looking online at options and thinking it over the other day, I picked up a sound tools bag to get a cable out of for something else and right away thought that that fabric was perfect. The logo was almost the right size too and for the price of buying the fabric I wanted, I could just order more sound tools bags. So that kind of made it an easy choice from there. Now the original fabric they used was really super stretchy and even though I tried to account for that and then cut even bigger around my pattern, this material could have still used a bit more room to work with. I found this nice thick double sided tape that has a soft gel like texture to it for the underside of the headband and in the end clamps as well to hold the fabric tight. I started at the ends, which may have been a mistake, and then secured the middle, which leaves only a few folds that don't look too horrible before stitching. I've got some thick waxed black thread to stitch the headband up with, and I'm sure with practice or done by someone who knows what they're doing, this could look a lot better, but for my first try, I'm happy that it just works again. I seem to always have a ton of these little 3.5 millimeter cables that you get free with computer monitors sometimes, so it feels good to finally have a use for those as well. These ear pads are honestly not my favorite, unfortunately, since they still include some of that cheap fake leather that I didn't notice when I ordered them. So those will probably get swapped for something else eventually. But for the moment, this pair of otherwise unusable headphones is back in action and more usable than ever. What do you think? Leave it in the comments below and share this video everywhere you can so more people repair their broken stuff instead of throwing it away to buy a new one. Thanks for watching.